What is going on guys? Sumi here with Thoughtcast. Today I'm gonna talk about why relationships cost money. Now they cost money for guys and girls, but I'm gonna be real with you. It costs a lot more for guys in today's generation to be in a relationship. Being in a relationship is a financial decision. You need to be financially stable before you get into a relationship. And I think a lot of people don't do this. They think that love is free and they can jump into a relationship and not spend anything. Well, newsflash, relationship costs money. And even if you're getting everything for free, if you're a girl and your boyfriend pays for everything, the time that you're spending in the relationship, emotionally being there with this man, there is a cost to it. That's time you could be spending on building your business, working more hours, and just generating other opportunities for your cash flow. So I'm talking strictly financial here. Relationships cost money. And honestly, the one who pays more is typically the guy. The single most important decision that you'll ever make in your entire life for your financial stability is who you marry, right? I heard this from one of my mentors and I stick by it today because you can literally marry into money, right? The quickest way to become a millionaire is just to marry a millionaire. But also at the same time, you could lose a lot in a relationship from child support to court cases to just being completely taken over by another person in terms of time, effort, energy. Like, you know, relationships do cost a lot. And if they're decreasing your mental health, if they're reducing your ability to be functional, they also indirectly decrease your ability to make money. So that being said, Let's get into the financials of what a relationship actually costs. Now, if you look at the data, relationships cost about $6,850 a year to maintain. That's the average cost of a relationship, regardless of gender. Now, I would say on the guy side, it's a little bit more expensive. I would say closer to eight, nine. And for a woman, it's a little bit cheaper. And women might be mad at me saying, oh, why is it cheaper for us? Why is it more expensive for guys? I mean, the world is still very traditional in a sense. 50% of relationships are traditional, whereas a guy takes care of a lot of things and the woman is just there. Look, this message is more so geared to the guys. When you start to date somebody, you're going to have to logically take them on a date. And the first impression matters. So if you're going on a date with a girl, I'm gonna be real with you, a lot of women still are gonna expect you to pay on the first date. They're still gonna expect you to put your wallet forward, take your credit card out, so on and so forth. Very few women that I know in today's dating generation, while it is improving, are willing to split the bill. And if they are splitting the bill, it's not a positive first impression. Their friends are often like, wow, he's weird. He didn't even pay for you, so on and so forth. A lot of their philosophies are, if you're asking me out on a date, you're taking up some of my time and I expect you to take care of the date. And I do agree with this. But the thing is, how often are women asking guys out on a date? It is ridiculously rare, even in today's generation. So I want you to understand that guys, you're often gonna be stuck paying for a date or being expected to pay for it. Now your choice to do it or not is up to you, but I'm gonna be real with you. If you make a first impression where you're splitting the bill with a woman, you're still spending money on yourself and you're not necessarily getting that relationship or growing that relationship with that girl because she's not necessarily a fan of yours because there's other guys that are willing to spend money on that date. And at the end of the day, you're going there to build that relationship. If you're going there and nothing happens, you're effectively wasting your time, which is wasting your money. So at the end of the day, regardless of it or not, it's really important for you to make a positive first impression. I'm not gonna get in the battle of should you pay or not, but the important thing is, is to make a positive first impression and paying definitely helps. Relationships are always going to cost you money. Whether it's time that you spend on dinners and dates, especially when you start to develop that relationship, time that you spent going on trips and vacations, Valentine's Day, holidays, birthdays, Christmas presents, all of the above, they start to add up financially, especially if you have to support your other person, if you have to support your spouse. When you look at relationships in today's society, there is still primarily one breadwinner who supports the household. So whether you like it or not, the decision to get married is a financial decision. A lot of people will say, hey, I wanna be financially stable before I get married. And there's a reason for that, because no matter what way you slice it, it's going to cost money. So my advice for you, if you're a young person, if you're someone that doesn't necessarily have their financial stability to where it needs to be, don't date. I'm being real with you. Don't date unless you're in a position to where you can take care of yourself from A to Z, and then you're willing and you're able to financially contribute into a partnership. It is first off taking care of yourself. A relationship should not cost you to increase your personal costs. You know, a lot of women will say this, oh, I have to get my nails done, I have to get my hair done, I have to take care of myself. You should be doing that by yourself, with or without a relationship. You should not rely on a relationship to dictate how well you take care of yourself. You should be going to the gym, you should be taking care of yourself, you should be getting your hair, your nails, whatever it is done, because that is your own maintenance. Same thing for a guy, it goes both ways, grooming, getting your beard lined up, so on and so forth. So a relationship should not increase your personal costs, but a relationship is a separate bracket. It's a separate bucket to where you put your money into, your time, your energy, your effort. Keyword, time, effort, energy, money. These all financially cost something at the end of the day. You can actually calculate how much your time is worth. So if you're spending four or five hours with your spouse, with your girlfriend, with your situationship a week, 
that is costing you money that you could be used to building a side business, to working an extra job, to increasing your monetization in some way, shape, or form in whatever career that you might be engaging in. So you have to understand, once again, no matter what way you slice it, relationships cost money. Let go of the idea that love is free because it is not. It's going to cost you money. At the end of the day, my advice to you is to become financially stable before you get in a relationship. Now, what is financially stable? That depends on the area that you live in and what your lifestyle is about. I typically would say if you're making above $50,000 a year, you're pretty financially stable in today's economy. Now, a lot of you will say, oh, that's so little. That's not enough. And I know there's a lot of people that say, hey, he has to be making six figures or more. Look, making fifty to seventy to eighty thousand dollars in today's economy is more than enough to take care of yourself. And most households in America are making an income of forty to fifty thousand dollars. So you're doing a little bit better than the average household income in the United States. That being said, guys, I hope this information was useful. Click the links below if you ever want to connect with me. And that being said, sue me out.